In my last video, which you guys blew up with engagement, thank you, I talked about some of the simple life lessons I learned from going to the gym. Most people learn these things from self-help books, mentors, school, or they just kind of figure it out on their own. I, like I said in my last video, had to learn these things by going to the gym. Since you all liked the last video, I wanted to offer some more assistance in the form of actionable next steps as I expand on one of the things that I talked about in that video, which is how I learned to be more disciplined. So if you feel like you're not as disciplined as you should be at work, in school, or with your physical or mental health or anything else, here are some actionable next steps you can take today to help make yourself more disciplined. And before we get into this, I just want to mention that I know a lot of my subscribers subscribe for very specific TCGs. Uh, this is going to be on the X Record Digimon video, as you are watching right now. Um, but the part one is actually from our latest Dragon Ball Super CCG video. So if you want part one, go check that out now. It's actually become one of uh, the most engaged videos on the channel, one of the fastest growing videos on the channel. Uh, thank you so much. Now, before we talk about practicing discipline, I want to discuss first removing the need for discipline from your life. There are probably many unnecessary instances in which you feel that discipline needs to be enacted in order to accomplish your goals, but in reality, discipline is the least effective way to solve that particular problem. The first and most effective thing you can do is to design your life around your goals rather than trying to force success by being disciplined, which isn't as hard as you may think. It's actually really simple. All you're going to do is take note of the things you want to accomplish and then figure out how to design your life around that goal. For example, a long time ago, I found that I wasn't meeting my deadlines at work. When thinking about how I could better set myself up for success, I noticed that the screen time on my phone was really high. So all I had to do was stay off of my phone while I was at work. But anyone who's had this problem will tell you that it's easier said than done. What I needed to do was create and enact a design that would make accessing my phone harder or impossible. So the first thing I did was ensure my family and friends all had my phone number to my office and access to my office calendar so that they could reach me at work if they ever needed to. Then I just left myself into my car. It was literally that simple. Once my phone was no longer around, I found that I thought about it way less and I worked way more. I did the same thing with junk food. There was a point in my life when I was eating carbs and zebra cakes pretty consistently. It hadn't become a problem yet, but I feared that it might soon. And I also recognized that consistently eating these foods would slow down my performance at the gym and the gains I should be reaping from a daily gym schedule. All I had to do was not buy those things at the store. When I say design, I'm literally speaking about the environment you live in, designing that environment in a way that removes the things that are sort of causing you to not be as disciplined as you should. So removing the cell phone from my office and refusing to bring junk food home were the very simple solutions that I had to enact in order to see huge impacts. Additionally, I now had less reason to mentally exhaust myself on a daily basis when trying to become a more disciplined person. The next piece of actionable advice you should start practicing is to create an identity around your goals. Start looking at yourself as the person who does these things rather than being someone who tries to accomplish them. James Clear talks about this in his book, Atomic Habits, which is a book I highly recommend to everyone to read at least once in their lifetime. It's genuinely a really good book and one of my favorite books of all time. So, the example that James Clear gives concerns smoking. When offered a cigarette, two people have very different responses. One says, I don't smoke anymore, and the other says, I don't smoke. One of these people still identifies as a smoker who is trying to avoid the urge to take the cigarette, but the other person has taken on the identity of a non-smoker who no longer needs to force himself to quit. To put it simply, creating an identity around your goals and seeing yourself as that new person will really help you to stay more dedicated to your goals, and practicing discipline will become much easier. A lot of people who begin to identify as athletes find it easier to stick to long-term health goals. You may not be jacked and ripped and able to bench 300 pounds, but if you're eating like an athlete, training like an athlete, and sleeping like an athlete, then it doesn't really matter what your body looks like or what you can physically accomplish right now, you're still an athlete simply because you're doing all of the things that athletes do. And once you recognize that, it becomes a lot easier to do something like just make it to the gym every day. Another example would be my career in marketing. 
I don't have a degree despite my 50k in loan debt and I never had formal paid experience in the industry prior to landing my first job at a firm. But I still saw myself as a marketer and I only work my dream career today because a long time ago I just decided I was going to start marketing. I got in touch with local restaurants and nonprofits to sit down and show them best practices for social media. I did this because I recognized myself as someone who does marketing, not someone who wanted to do it one day. And it's that experience that I was able to put into my portfolio to finally land my dream job. A uh, famous Stoic philosopher, Marcus Aurelius, might align this with his own philosophy of finding your purpose. I don't like this example as many people don't care to have a grander purpose in life and that's 100% fine. Uh, Aurelius was more discussing the idea of a career or day-to-day -day things being the purpose itself, but many people don't desire a purpose tied to productivity or money. Maybe the purpose you want to assign yourself is enjoying life to its fullest extent, somewhat like myself. Uh, though I want part of my life's purpose to be having a positive impact on other people like what I'm trying to do right now with this video, I've also found that I want my purpose to be maximizing the time that I have to spend doing the things that I enjoy. Time with my wife, breaking PRs at the gym, reading, playing video games, and other things of the like. Those kinds of things can absolutely be your purpose, but regardless of the purpose you want first, you need to make the active decision of choosing it. Defining your purpose will help ease the burden of day-to-day -day tasks and struggles necessary to accomplish that purpose. For example, one of the purposes I stated was spending time with my wife. In order to maximize the amount of time that we can spend together, I need to complete all of my responsibilities on a day-to-day -day basis as quickly as possible. The more disciplined I am in my work, the sooner I can close my laptop, toss my paperwork aside, and begin spending more time with my wife. On the other hand, I could not practice discipline in this way, and the results would be less time with my wife. So I can either do the things that will deliver the rewards I want, or I can refuse and go without. Now, if you do desire a grander purpose that will have a larger impact on people, like maybe you want to start a YouTube channel that teaches people about discipline while you open trading cards, uh, you first need to start doing that thing because you need to accept what you're meant to do, as Marcus Aurelius says, finding your purpose. Uh, and while it may feel like work, it's actually not. Marcus Aurelius's real quote was, I have to go to work as a human being what do I have to complain of if I am doing what I was born for? I think Scout from Team Fortress 2 explains it a bit better when he says, grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I hurt people. See, Scout has found his life's purpose, though yours should never be the same, unless you're like an MMA fighter or a boxer or something. Um, anyway, what Marcus and Scout are both saying is that because they found their life's purpose, they aren't doing work. Grass doesn't need to actively think about growing, just like birds don't force themselves to fly, and the sun doesn't put in mental effort to shine. They're all just doing the things that they were naturally meant to do. Just like the sun was designed to shine, you were designed with some greater purpose as well. Um, but unlike the sun, you have the freedom to choose what that purpose is. Uh, once you come to the realization and you begin to practice that thing on a daily basis, you'll start to realize that it's just natural for you to do so, and then discipline isn't really a problem anymore, much like in the first actionable step that we just... The next thing on my list is my absolute favorite, and I swear by it. Uh, for many people, discipline just isn't possible because they're overwhelmed by large tasks. This could be you, or maybe it's not, and this next piece of advice will just make things that much easier. But sitting down and making an actual plan helps to ease any kind of paralysis that may rear its head when attempting to tackle large tasks or large goals. I want to give a small example though, because I believe uh, this, like if you want to try this out, making an actual plan, um, this should be everyone's first practical step in applying this advice. It sounds silly, but I swear it works, so stick with me. Cleaning something. This could be your bedroom, your entire house, your car, your dishes, your laundry, whatever. If you have found that you procrastinate when keeping these spaces or things clean, all you need to do is this. First, make the conscious decision to clean. So you say, okay, I want to clean my bedroom or I want to wash the dishes. Second, don't start doing the thing yet. 
Uh, very important, don't start doing the thing. But instead, make a physical list of all the individual things that need to be done. So whether it be in the Notes app on your phone or an actual piece of paper and a pen, uh, make an actual physical list. So if you're having trouble getting up to wash the dishes in the sink, you make a list of all the things that need cleaned. Plates first, then cups, forks, spoons, knives, and then also put on the list that you are going to dry them and put them away. And it also helps to be more specific when like making the uh, tasks. So maybe saying that you are going to dry all of the things in a particular order and then put them in very specific uh, cupboards, cabinets, or drawers. Or if you're having trouble cleaning your room, you make a list of the individual tasks that need to be done to do so. Third, and this is important as well, treat the list like a plan or a timeline. Do all of the things in the order you wrote them down. This process is really effective for many people because it's often not the task itself or discipline being a problem, it's instead the daunting nature of the task or goal. I still do this for everything in my life and things like cleaning my home have become so redundant that I have the list memorized now. Uh, an added benefit to this method is that the more often you execute it, the more quickly you're able to accomplish all of the tasks. And it's not something you need to be conscious of or work towards either, it just happens naturally. One final thing you can do to help is to set a timer when you begin whatever task it is, whether it's cleaning or something else that you've applied this method to. And at the end of completing your list or your plan, you'll have an idea of how long it actually took. Because sometimes it is easier to commit when you actually know for sure how long the commitment will take. The last thing I want to say about cleaning specifically, not really being disciplined, um, is a quote from one of my favorite anime, Oreka 7. For those who have never watched, there's a couple in the show, Charles and Ray Beams, who said, if you clean every day, there's less to clean. Uh, that has nothing to do with discipline on a grander scale. It's just some solid advice for anyone who procrastinates cleaning, specifically because of the amount of time it takes. I watched the show when I was like 14, I think, and that one quote has become a daily practice that has followed me into my 30s. Genuinely life-changing. The next tip is actually one that I don't like and I have never done before. I'm only including it because while some people clown on the other people who do this, some people do it and swear by it. I think it's more effective when you know the actual reason behind the practice. It also becomes more understandable and seems like less of a pseudo alpha male thing when it's better explained. But taking a cold shower, that method. If you're rolling your eyes, just know that I am too. Again, it does really work for some people and that's why I wanted to include it. We know that the idea is to just take a cold shower every day, but understanding the reason behind it, I think, is what makes the difference. The idea is that you are forcing yourself to do something that you don't want to do, possibly because of the discomfort it will cause. A cold shower is an easy way to do this because it's quick and relatively painless. It's not going to take as long as some of the responsibilities you are procrastinating, and it's not mentally or physically exhausting like them either. But the act of forcing yourself to do it will help you in a couple ways. First, many people only lack discipline in the beginning stages of a responsibility or commitment. It's not so much doing the thing as it is starting the thing. The gym would, as always, be a great example of this. Uh, many times people don't have trouble committing to the new routine of going to the gym, but instead they just have trouble getting dressed, getting in the car, and driving there. When I first started going to the gym, I also had the same problem, but I didn't solve it with cold showers. Instead, I had a conversation with a weightlifter that I worked with in the liquor store that I used to help manage. He said that he had made a deal with himself, and the deal was, as long as he changes into his gym clothes, drives to the gym, and steps foot in the gym lobby, he will still go home and skip the gym that day if he still feels like he doesn't want to work out. Uh, he did this because he recognized that the problem was not staying committed or the routine itself. The problem he had was just that he didn't want to take the first step. He just didn't want to start doing the work. The cold shower routine is meant to help with this issue because it's a daily practice in starting something that you maybe don't want to do. Doing something like driving to the gym, sitting down at your desk to actually start a project, or finally starting the task that you are procrastinating becomes easier to do because you're practicing the idea of taking the first step every day when you step into the shower. 
Like myself and my old bodybuilding buddy, you may not have to adopt the cold shower routine so long as you recognize the issue and create a way to work around it. But maybe the problem isn't starting. Maybe the problem is in actually doing the thing. The cold shower is meant to help with that as well. It's not just a daily practice in starting tasks, but also a daily practice in completing tasks that you don't want to do, recognizing that you don't want to do the tasks, and seeing it through anyway. Despite all the talk about designing your life and surroundings and creating an identity, making a plan, and anything else that could be discussed when talking about productivity or discipline, sometimes the best advice is to just do the things despite knowing that you don't want to do them, or better yet, making it a point to do the things when you recognize that you don't want to do them. When I started at the first marketing firm I ever worked for, I had a boss who would structure our team's responsibilities and workload differently for this purpose. For me, I usually had a ton of paperwork and reporting surrounding my work, and I hated that. What I did like about my job, however, was the socializing that I got to do. Things like representing my clients and the firm at networking events, public speaking opportunities, sitting on boards, and helping my clients when attending live events. All of those things I noticed I did less of than my coworkers, and when I did those things, it always seemed to be at the tail end of a week or a month. I asked my boss about this and she said, yes, I did that on purpose. When I began working there, she quickly noticed what tasks I would gravitate towards and spend more time and effort on, and what tasks I would shy away from, which often resulted in lower quality than my coworkers. She structured my responsibilities in a way that forced me to do the work I hated before I could do the work that I loved. And she did this when assigning tasks and projects to all of us. My boss told me that we should always do the things we need to do before we do the things we want to do. So she would first identify my wants or the work I was actively seeking out, and she would label that work as my want. And then she identified the work I was always trying to avoid or the work that was lacking in quality because I refused to allocate enough time to it, and she would label that work as need. The only way I was able to get out of the office and attend these more social-centric parts of my job is if I first completed my paperwork and reporting on time and got approved by my boss once the quality of work was up to snuff. This was her version of the cold shower, and it has become a lifestyle for me. I talked about this in my Dragon Ball Super video you all loved so much. I structure my day-to-day -day life in this exact way in order to maximize the amount of free time I have, and it has the added benefit of maximizing my enjoyment of free time when I know that all of my responsibilities are taken care of. Again, I don't think you need to take cold showers, but instead just start practicing the reasons for the cold shower. If you can recognize the problem and find a creative way around it, like my weightlifting buddy or my old boss, that's just fine. Too. The final thing I want to discuss is another one of my absolute favorites, and it's called the dopamine detox. The idea was popularized by California psychiatrist Dr. Cameron Seppa. I've actually never heard the name said out loud, so excuse me if I butcher it. Uh, but anyway, it's really nothing new. Um, it's just a form of cognitive behavioral therapy that Dr. Seppa has helped to popularize. Cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, is a therapy that is literally designed to change the way you think by helping to regulate the chemicals in your brain. I do hate the name dopamine detox though because it's not an actual detox, it's more of a scheduled fasting for short periods of time. You're going to schedule these short periods of time in which you will abstain from all dopamine triggers. Some examples of things that trigger the unhealthy dopamine response are alcohol, electronic forms of entertainment, raunchy videos on the internet, social media, or snacking and eating outside of your normal meals. What you will not be abstaining from are healthy activities that you enjoy. For example, if you enjoy working out or socializing, you will not be putting those things on your list of things to abstain from. We don't want to stop ourselves from engaging in activities that have a positive effect on our physical or mental health. This is a common mistake that people make when doing a dopamine detox. Next, you're going to choose a time to fast or abstain from all dopamine triggers. The examples given by Dr. Seppa are setting aside one to four hours at the end of the day. Uh, I start when eating dinner with my wife and I keep the trend going until bedtime. One weekend day, uh, I dedicate either Saturday or Sunday to only work on a video so I don't engage with the dopamine triggers. One weekend per quarter, which I don't do this, but Dr. Sepper recommends taking a local trip. Or one week per year, which I also don't practice, but Dr. Sepa recommends a vacation where you can unplug and escape the dopamine triggers. 
But if you don't like Dr. Seppa's example of fasting, uh, you could do what I do, which is just schedule specific times to engage with these things. For example, my two biggest dopamine triggers are scrolling through social media and drinking alcohol. So I scheduled my social media time to be once a day for specific hours. I choose between like six and seven because my wife and I usually eat around that time so I can put my phone away and then ride that wave until bedtime. Um, I also want to abstain from electronics at least two hours before bed so that I can sleep better. Um, it helps me to fall asleep easier when my brain isn't engaged. Um, and alcohol is either restricted to Friday or Saturday nights between 7 and 10, with special occasions being exceptions. This allows me to have weekly time dedicated to drinking alcohol if I need help to unwind after a long week, but it also helps me to make sure I don't drink in excess. The important thing about my custom method, though, is that you don't compromise with the schedule. So, I will never grab my phone in the morning when I wake up to scroll social media, I don't use it at the gym between sets, and I don't use it when I'm bored at work. And if for some reason I need my weekly beer but can't have it, I can just move it to a different day, like this weekend when I had to drive my wife and our friends to dinner. I just abstained that day, and then I just moved the beer to Saturday night. Committing to a dopamine detox or a dopamine schedule will help you to practice control over otherwise compulsive behaviors. What ends up happening after committing to a detox or a schedule for an extended period of time is that you build a sort of mental muscle that recognizes your desire to engage in activities for pleasure and stops them from forming habits without you knowing. It allows you to be a more cognizant person by identifying these pleasure triggers before engaging in them, and it gives you more control over these things by making you an active participant in the decision-making process. So when I do drink or I do scroll through social media, I know it's my decision and not the decision made by my ancient caveman brain. But yeah, that's um, that's it. This is the unscripted part of the video. Uh, I ran out of script, but we still have some time to kill. I guess I just wanna uh, thank everyone for indulging me in this new format. Uh, got a lot of positive feedback when it was used for the Dragon Ball Super video. Um, and I know that this is probably, again, like I said at the beginning, coming as a surprise or a shock to those of you who subscribed only to watch the Digimon. So you're probably like, what's happening like what what is this where did this come from uh but yeah this is just part two of a video that got a lot of positive feedback if you want to go see part one check out the uh dragon ball super ccg mythic booster unboxing um that was a lot of fun and i didn't know about the mythic booster beforehand it's like really cool basically uh just a bunch of like cool alternate arts and uh rares really really enjoyed opening that box but i also really enjoy this new format i'm probably going to do it some more uh if you are a fan of these sort of like live reactions that we do when we're unboxing uh those those are not going anywhere i just really wanted to kind of like experiment with this i think it's going to be more of like uh when there's something that i really want to talk about passionately uh, that's when I'm gonna like write a video essay and then uh, just kind of like put the audio over it like I'm doing right now. Um, it's just, I don't think it's very sustainable week to week because I'm one person and um, I think this, this takes like roughly, I think it's seven pages. I think it's like a seven page essay that I have to write every time, but. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We uh, are almost at like 200 subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for everything. Uh, and if you aren't liked and subscribed, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.